my mind a lot lately and that keeps coming up in my life over and over again so usually when something keeps coming up over and over again that's a clue to me that I'm supposed to do something with it so this is what I'm doing with it um, so my question to you is are you an innie or are you an outie and I'm not talking about your belly button and what I mean by that is are you an introvert or are you an extrovert and some of you, as soon as I asked the question, immediately knew which one you were, and some of you aren't sure. So if you're not sure, um, I'm going to put a link below to a little online quiz that you can do to find out if you are, in fact, an introvert or an extrovert. But most of us know, especially if we're introverted, we definitely know. So the reason that um, this has been coming up a lot lately with me is that I am an introvert. And oftentimes when I tell people that, they're surprised because I've always had occupations that were fairly social so before um, becoming a yoga teacher I was a hairstylist for 12 years so I obviously had to talk a lot um, as a hairstylist um, so for me um, when I first started doing hair I knew that I would be doing an awful lot of small talk in the very beginning when I was getting to know my clients um, you know, we wouldn't be talking about anything in depth, and so I realized pretty quickly that I was going to have to learn how to do some small talk. And I literally had to write myself a script of like, okay, small talk, so how do people do that? What is small talk? What do people commonly talk about? And so, you know, I wrote down a few little ideas of things that I could ask my clients about when they were brand new to me um, to get to know them a little bit in a you know kind of light way that wasn't too intimidating um, and then of course on the next visit I had you know things to refer back to and so that's actually um, small talk for me is a learned skill that I've had to unfortunately learn to conform to kind of the norms of you know what society expects but it's not um, my preferred mode of communication by any means so I just want to read you a couple of things about introverts and extroverts, and then I'm also going to leave some resources um, down in the Dropbox below for either you, if you are an introvert or an extrovert, or for um, somebody in your life. If you want to share this video with them, um, then you can do that. So that might be helpful to some people that uh, you know. Or you might have a new understanding if you're an extrovert and you have an introvert in your life that you're close to and you may have some misconceived ideas about what it means to actually be an introvert. And so this might give you a better understanding um, of that introverted person in your life. And if you're an introvert, you can send this to all your extrovert friends and then maybe they'll understand a bit more. So I'm reading some things. There's three columns here. Um, one with the word, one with the extrovert's definition, and then one with the introvert's definition of a word. So it's kind of a, just a cute um, little chart that points this out pretty clearly. So we'll start with the first one. The word is alone. An extrovert's definition is lonely. An introvert's definition is um, enjoying peace and quiet time. Um, the second word is book. An extrovert's definition is doorstop or paperweight. An introvert's definition is source of comfort, safe and an inex a safe and inexpensive method of traveling, having adventures, and meeting interesting people. Free time for an extrovert is when you do group activities. And an introvert, it is a time when you read without interruption until you're in danger of going blind, <laughs> which I think, I think I've done a few times. Um, a friend, someone who makes sure you're never alone. That's for an extrovert. And an introvert, a friend, is someone who understands that you're not rejecting him or her when you need to be alone. Um, good manners. To an extrovert, making sure people aren't left all by themselves, filling any silences with a conversation. And an introvert's definition would be not bothering people unless it's necessary or they approach you. Sometimes you bother people you know, but you make sure that they aren't busy first. Home. For an extrovert, a place to invite everybody in that you know. To an introvert, a place to hide from everybody you know. The internet. Um, to an extrovert, another medium for advertising, a place where geeks go with no life to hang out. To an introvert, a way to meet other introverts. You don't actually have to go out. And writing allows you to think before just blurting something out. Love. Never having to do anything alone, 
that's for an extrovert, and for an introvert, being understood and appreciated. Phone, for an extrovert, a lifeline to other people, your reason for living. To an introvert, a necessary question mark, evil, and yet another interruption, occasionally useful, but mostly a nuisance. To an extrovert, um, to go out requires at least two people, the more the better. Constant chatter, loud music, sports, crowds are all fun components of going out. To an introvert, going out can be done alone or with others. It's enjoyable to some point, i.e. out to see a band or a movie or a play perhaps, or to have some stimulating discussion with one or two close friends. Work. For an extrovert, work would be having to read, write, listen, or concentrate on anything. To an introvert, work would be being pestered every five minutes about something trivial and not being allowed to concentrate. So that's just kind of a, you know, funny little chart that points out some of the differences between um, an introvert and an extrovert. So I think it's probably pretty easy to find yourself in that one. And then the next one that I have um, is a definition that I often just email to people when they invite me out socially a lot and I, you know, I'm just basically starting to refuse to make excuses up. I used to feel like I had to make a good reason why I couldn't come to anything like, oh, I have plans that day, or sorry, I'm not really into that kind of thing, or um, gee, I wish I could, but I don't know, whatever, make up something. But now I just actually send them this link. And then usually if they, you know, they're understanding, they, they get it if they care about me, and if they don't, well, whatever, that's, that's, their, that's their cross to bear. So, introvert. Contrary to what most people think, an introvert is not a person that is simply shy. In fact, being shy has little to do with being an introvert. Shyness is an element of apprehension, nervousness, and anxiety. And while an introvert may also be shy, introversion itself is not shyness. Basically, an introvert is a person who is more concerned with the inner world of the mind and they enjoy thinking and exploring their thoughts and feelings. They often avoid social situations because being around people drains their energy. This is true even if they have good social skills. After being with people for any length of time, such, a part, such as a party, they need time alone to recharge. When introverts want to be alone, it is not by itself a sign of depression. It means that they either need to regain their energy from being around people, or that they simply want time to be with their own thoughts. Being with people even people they like and are comfortable with can prevent them from the desire to truly be quiet and introspective. Being introspective though does not mean that an introvert never has conversations. However, these conversations are generally about ideas and concepts, not what they consider trivial matters or social small talk. Introverts make up about 60% of the gifted population, I didn't know that, and only, but only about 25 to 40 percent of the general population. So there you go. There's a little bit about introverts. Um, there's a couple more things I'm going to put in the Dropbox below. Just so this video is not like crazy long. There's a a quiz, and then there's a um, five things that every extrovert should know about um, an introvert. And so if you're an introvert, um, even if you don't afford this video, you could cut and paste that out and send that around. Maybe if uh, there was a little more understanding about what it means to be an introvert, then people wouldn't uh, assume there's something wrong with you or that you're antisocial or, you know, nerdy or stuck up or whatever the other things are that go around. So anyway, I hope that's helpful to some of you. Um, and now from now on, when you invite me to something and I say no, you might know why. It might be because... Um, I'm already tired. I'm an introvert doing an extrovert's job. I, you know, I teach for a living and so I'm constantly in groups. So oftentimes in my private time, I have to kind of take extra time, um, away just to kind of reduce and recharge. Otherwise I've noticed about myself, if I don't do that, I tend to get sick. I get colds and flus and, or I just get really grumpy. Don't want to be around anybody. So there you go. Maybe if someone in your life is opting out of some social things, it's not because they don't like you or it's not because um, they have no social skills. It's just because they want to recharge. Hope that helps some of you. Uh, leave me some comments below. Um, if you're an extrovert and you had any uh, moments about people in your life or if you're an introvert and uh, you recognized anything, then let me know. Are you an innie or an outie? Leave me a comment below. Ciao.